let us begin as soon as I find my glasses. There's a lot of active, expressive power when the head tilts down and the chin touches the uh, chest area. Not too much, but just enough. But in that inverse, we move the eyes upward to look. And the way I'm moving along which axis I'm moving my liquefy. In my mind, I see lines. You use enough lines long enough, you'll start seeing these lines too. This is the line I'm seeing right now. These are just very, very simple, um, you know, very simple straight lines for a three-quarter view. What I want to do on liquefy is this. We're bringing the nose in closer. We're seeing less of the nostrils. We're seeing more of the mouth. And then we're seeing the eyes tilting upward, and then we're seeing the perspective. One thing I didn't do, which I should have done, is get rid of the iris and the pupils. Once we're, you know, messing around with liquefy, the iris and the pupil get distorted. We feel nervous messing them up, so we don't liquefy as much as we should be. So I get rid of the, li um, uh, the, the, the iris and the pupil because it'll just leave me with less things to worry about while I'm liquefying. Chin gets hidden away in the horizon. Everything else tilts along the horizon and then disappears. I feel like we all have that like um, call to, to, to learn all things expression. It's not always going to be just a stale, oh, I'm only interested in drawing type thing. We usually have a, an affinity for music or dancing. Like I know, like I, I mean, because of art being such a massive thing, in, in the world is such a general thing it's such a general entity it's such a general energy in the world that I find it very easy to dance very easy to connect to music very easy to act very easy to do accents very easy to remember characters because I remember them in their caricature and I think that's all to do with art so when I say there's an acting element that you have to you know you just have to be really good at acting it says something in there for you to be able to draw characters that express things with such um, accuracy um, I, I don't think I'm asking for something that you guys don't know how to do I think you guys do know how to do all of that and you definitely have an awareness for it so usually I do honor the original story written by the student who presented the painting but this time I just want to show you the benefit the before and after benefit of having this much perspective applied and then she'll just look so much more curious and then when we add back in the eyes and that curiosity now we have an upward movement in the eyes and a downward movement in the head so please make sure that you guys remember in three-quarter view even if it's a delicate three-quarter view they are completely two different things and anyone here who's thinking Making the mistake of thinking that through quarter view eyes are just mirrors. Yeah, for anyone who thinks that it's just a mirror reflection is wrong. And that uh, you said each element, I'm mostly talking about each eye. I just want you to like add that specific clause in just because it's, it's really about the eye that I'm trying to warn you that you're susceptible. Eh, when it comes to noses and mouths and through quarter view, they're not that hard to draw. The mouth is under-rendered by default because of we're trying to focus or create a focal point and the nose in three-quarter view is so easy because it's not two nostrils or symmetry that you have to worry about. And there is stacking on the nose which saves the day and helps establish perspective. Uh, we do have this elevation, but I feel like the elevation on the cheek that we would have here is due to, it's yeah, right at the highest, so wherever the peak, the high point of the mountain of the cheek is. So everyone touch your face, wherever that little bundle, that little apple of your cheek just sticks out, that's where that light would be. So one thing that I kind of lost in the critique is the smile, so I'm just gonna reapply it. She did have a nice smile, which was very cute. Um, you may have worked with a reference and you were just messing with some color. I'm not saying anything that you were doing or going for before was wrong. But, you know, it's not about the before and after me. If I wanted to improve the before, I would have done a little bit more radial shading here, corrected the perspective here, corrected the perspective of the nose, and kept everything where it should be. It was about things you can do to a portrait that will take it to a completely different presentation level. All right, so a lot of simplicity, but that's the illusion of simplicity is that it looks simple, but then you try it and then you're caught up with your own beginner insecurities. Simplicity is about clear-cut division, 
it's about flat values, it's about minimal elevation topographically in unimportant subject matter, it's about promoting the focal point, simplicity is about keeping only the focal point as any area with edges or sharpness or small brushwork or contrast. It's about the light. The light is how we manage and maintain the simplicity in our paintings because if, if we only ever think about the light, it becomes very, very easy to not be distracted by the glamour of painting a face, which is how we all started. We all drew a face one day and decided I like drawing faces. And we all taking it to another level because, you know, we see what other artists in history and in modern times are doing with portraits and we want to advance ourselves forward so we learn all the fundamentals. No matter what happens in your week, no matter where your week takes you, if it takes you up, if it takes you down, doesn't matter as long as we meet together every Tuesday and Thursday and talk about the thing that brings us joy which is drawing. And that's something you can always depend on art to do, bring you joy as you draw.